Today I'm going to present Windows Azure, the Windows Azure Pack for System Center, as well as some of the new enhancements to Windows Server 2012 R2 for private cloud. So what I have right here is I'm logged into the Windows Azure portal. Um, you can see I have a number of services assigned to my company. I have virtual images, I have storage accounts, I have Hyper-V Recovery Manager, all kinds of information here and things I can do. So what I want to do to start with is actually look at um, the virtual machines. So specifically, I have four machines running and four that are stopped. And it's worth noting that in Windows Azure, you're only billed for the CPU cycles and the storage that you're using. If you have a stopped machine, um, you're not going to be billed for that. So here I can see four that are running. Let me show you what it looks like when we create a new virtual machine. You see I have a rich set of um, actions that I can perform when I click New. I'm under the Compute menu, um, so I'm under Virtual Machine. I'm going to select one from a gallery. Now, note I have the usual suspects here, Windows Server 2012, SharePoint, um, a lot of different versions of SQL Server, even BizTalk Server or Visual Studio. But as I move down, Notice I have a rich ecosystem of uh, platforms that are not just Microsoft. I have Java, lots of different Oracle applications that are now certified to run on Azure. Um, I've got uh, SUSE Linux, a couple different versions. I got Ubuntu and OpenLogic and um, my own specific uh, SQL Server images that I've uploaded here. So let me show you what that looks like. Under the My Images dialog, these are virtual machine images that are certified for my organization. We know they're going to work. Um, maybe they're a dev test or a database or some specific image we use a lot. We can publish these up into the Azure Cloud and use them in Azure or bring them back on premise and use them on site or a combination of the two if we like. So what I'm going to do is create just a standard Windows Server 2012 R2 image. Let me go through the dialog here quickly and give it a name. Notice I have lots of options around size. I'm going to create one core uh, for this demo, but I could go all the way up to eight cores and 56 gigabytes of memory. Um, give a username, uh, a quick password here, and go to next. Now here's the options um, I'm presented with. Notice that I can create uh, affinity groups or virtual networks here or specific re regions. Um, for this sample, I've already created a virtual network for my company, um, but you can specifically um, put applications to run in different regions in Windows Azure. So for the United States, uh, that's one region. Um, but it'll be split across different data centers that are 400 miles apart within the United States. Um, for storage accounts, um, I'm going to select one I've already created here under Contoso Images. I also have the option of um, opening up different ports on my virtual machine. Here I've got two standard ports open, or I could add more if I wanted to. Okay, while that's provisioning, um, Let's go over and take a look at one of the virtual machines that I already have running here. Uh, we've got some nice, rich information on the virtual machine, um, how we monitor it. But down here at the bottom, I've got a new feature for Windows Azure called Auto Scale. So I'm going to click Auto Scale and scroll down a bit here. And a couple different ways to scale this. I can actually scale it based on the time of day. Um, or in this example, I'm going to scale it based on how much CPU is being utilized on that machine. What I'm saying here is I want between one and three instances of this virtual machine. Um, and I want to scale it up when my CPU is between the 60 to 80 percent range. And I only want to do that one at a time. And you got to wait 20 minutes before you go forward and do that. Okay. Now. Back on my uh, main uh, web page here in Windows Azure, I'm going to scroll down and look at the actual networks here. One of the interesting things with Windows Azure that you can do today is create your own virtual network um, and secure that in a way that it links seamlessly 
with your internal uh, network or your data center. So to my users or my admins locally, these servers, Contoso 1 through 5, these virtual machines that are running, it looks like it's on our network because it's running across a secure VPN gateway that we've created in Windows Azure. Now, let me show you something new for System Center, which is related to Windows Azure. One of the continuing requests that Microsoft got from their customers was, wow, this is great. We love the control and the monitoring and the failover capability with Windows Azure, but we've invested so much in our own data center with our own SANs and our own network. Can we have these tools internally? So now we do. We have this toolkit called um, the Windows Azure Pack for System Center. So if you own System Center, this is a free download that you can bolt on top. And notice it looks similar, right? I've got a lot of the same items here that I have in Windows Azure, um, but I'm actually running this locally here on my Contoso site. So let's take a quicker look here at the uh, virtual machines that I've created. I've got uh, two provisioned that aren't running and then one that's running right here. But if I want to create a new one, you can see the dialog looks very similar to what we have in Windows Azure. I can create one from the gallery. Um, and these are actually the default applications. You can actually specify and upload your own corporate certified images into your gallery to create your own, um, your own virtual machines. I want to do is show you uh, when I click on one of these machines, Contoso Sales WS, how we can configure the, the scaling and instances of these machines. Um, so for this particular machine, I'm saying, hey, I've got 800 cores available in Windows Azure with my subscription. I want this guy to have four. Here's how much RAM I want him to have. Um, uh, here's how many times we can create the virtual machine as we go forward. If I look at scaling specifically, um, for this one, I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to keep it at, at medium, two cores. But we can also say, hey, more than two instances, I want to have maybe three. Or maybe five, right? So we're going to leave it at five here and save that and go forward. Now, I just jumped over to my Windows Server 2012 um, administrative console. This is important to show some of the improvements with Windows Server 2012 R2 and how this really helps private cloud and having a hybrid data center where I have some components on-prem and some in the cloud. If you recall with Windows Server 2012, the concept of storage pools were introduced where we could take lots of different disks and allocate them together into a storage pool. Well, with the R2 version of Windows Server 2012, we can now create um, storage pools that use different kinds of, of, of uh, storage. So for in this example, I have SSDs on my machine and I also have uh, typical hard drives. Let me just show you how this works real quick. So I'm going to create a new virtual disk. Let me give it a name real fast here. And I'm going to create something called tiered storage. And what this allows me to do is, is let the server take advantage of the fact that I have different kinds and different uh, speeds of storage as part of this uh, virtual disk. I'm going to go ahead and mirror this guy and make it a uh, three-way fixed volume, and I'm going to use the maximum size available on both my hard drives and my SSDs. Okay, so let's create that. It looks good. So now that I've got this virtual disk created with tiered storage, I want to run a test on that. So what I have here is a SQL load test utility, pretty standard. And I've got two different machines I'm going to test this on. The first one is the older Windows Server 2012. And I'm going to test uh, direct attached storage and remote file storage with this SQL load test. And my throughput here is about 7,500 
IOs per second a little bit slower in remote file storage, which would be expected. But if I look at the Windows Server 2012 R2, keep in mind, we're using the tiered storage that we just set up. If I run the SQL load test on that drive, I'm getting 124,000 IOs per second. And when you look at that all together, that's, that's a pretty big difference between uh, Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2 with um, the new data mapping that we have. So, so what, right? H why is this important to me? Well, let me show you what it looks like if we do a live migration. So with, with um, Hyper-V, with Windows Server 2012, we can actually migrate these virtual images in real time uh, while they're still running, right? Windows Server 2012 to 2012, uh, a typical migration of moving a, a, um, a virtual images running SQL Server took about a minute and 25 seconds. When we move up to R2 and use compression, and this is not using the, the data tier, the, the, um, uh, the striping that we just created with the SSDs, if we use compression, it takes about 32 seconds. When we're using the remote data memory access, which is basically saying, hey, take advantage of the faster storage, that migration takes just over 10 seconds. So that's a big difference um, as far as how fast it takes to move a virtual machine over while it's still running. So I'm going to come back to my Windows Azure um, login here, and I'm back on the VPN page. Let me go back to the home page. And I want to show you how recovery services work. Um, this is very important, especially in highly regulated environments. You not only need to have a plan, but you need to be able to work the plan, test the plan, and then verify and show others that you have, in fact, tested the plan. So I have a uh, recovery plan set up for Contoso here. You can see I've got 12 virtual machines. Um, my protected items are moving, it's, this is showing the uh, where I'm headed and where I'm going as far as the servers and, and number of servers. I have VMM03 to VMM01. So if I look at the recovery plan specifically, let's open that up. At a high level, I've got pre-failover, failover, and then a couple other failover options, and I can segregate different machines and give them specific um, instructions. If I open this up a little bit though, I have a lot more information, a lot more details about how I'm going to do this failover and um, how we're gonna recover from that. So let's go ahead and test the failover. And here you can see I have unplanned and planned failover. So we get this question a lot. What happens if you know a data center gets crushed? Um, we, your data is always in three places and you always have a hot failover 400 miles away. Well, let's test that, right? So you can go ahead and test the unplanned failover. Click OK. And you can see that the recovery is in process and tons of logging and tons of information there to go back and see what actually happened. So what I've shown you is I showed, showed you the Windows Azure um, console and how we manipulate machines. I showed you the Windows Azure Pack for System Center, which allows you to have a private cloud on-premise, as well as some of the improvements with Windows Server 2012 R2 that let you uh, manage these private clouds much, much, much faster than we had previously uh, with older versions of Windows Server.